doing for a second mm-hmm. straight year. We pretty much have the same quarterback competition there in Athens. Uh, Bryce Ramsey, Grayson Lambert, of course, coming in from Virginia. He really had a, like a two or three game stretch against some lesser teams where he barely hit the uh, let the ball hit the ground, and then he got a wake up call against Alabama. He's towards a team that uh, surprisingly void of playmakers, dynamic playmakers on the perimeter. Uh, for one of the few times we've seen, and of course, a different head coach on the sideline for the first time in 15 years. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting storyline, guys. Um, I mean, the spring, you know, a lot of people, when they look at spring practices and they and they look at, you know, preview in the spring and things of that nature, um, a lot of it for me, just, you know, being on the sidelines and being around some teams, a lot of it for me is I look at the young guys as this is an opportunity for them to get reps and to learn. This is an education process as much as anything in the spring. And then the fall comes in, and that's when things really get serious and, and things start getting fine-tuned, and that's when you're really going to start seeing some movement in positions. Um, but, you know, I look at this team. Kirby Smart's got a massive task ahead of him, guys. Uh, you look at the fact that, you know, Georgia has become accustomed to, you know, winning, you know, no fewer than, what, eight games. Uh, only once have they done it between 2001 and 2015. But you turn around and you look, Georgia went to the SEC title game in 05. Um, and the last major bowl game for them was in 07 when they played the Sugar Bowl. So that's been, you know, the, the thing is that he's been tasked with is to try to take this team that's already here, bring in a new coaching staff, bring in a new set of recruits, and take the talent that he has, and can he take what he learned at Alabama and under Nick Saban and make it successful at Georgia? We've seen a lot of coaches, when they come in their first year in the SEC, have a lot of success. You look at Coach Mack. You look at uh, – you know, he's a perfect example. Um, you know, Coming in his first year, you look at Gus Malzahn, first year head coach uh, there at Auburn, had success. They typically do. Then it's the SEC teams tend to catch up. I'm curious to see how Kirby Smart – being a defensive-minded coach, how much does he give the reins to his offensive coordinator, um, who has not been really too successful successful as of late? He's been a part of two rebuilding programs at Tennessee as well as at Arkansas before heading to Purdue. So I'm curious to see how this all works out with a true freshman, Jacob Eason, who is possibly going to push for that starting quarterback job. Yeah, a lot of people like Eason. Of course, Nick Chubb's going to be back. Uh, they lose a couple linchpins on defense at David, and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, of course, Leonard Floyd's gone. Uh, your, your thoughts about Georgia coming into the spring? Well, I think you know, the big thing coming in with Kirby Smart is, is it going to be a change of culture there? You know, even though Georgia was winning, you know, around the conference and, you know, around the nation, Georgia was still kind of seen as a soft team. You know, they were never that big dominant team under Rick. And then, you know, he brought in Jeremy Pruitt to, you know, help toughen that team up. And that still didn't really happen. The defense was good, but there was always those games where they would let, you know, teams just run all over the field on them. Uh, so, you know, that was a change of culture with Kirby Smart coming in. I think that's going to be priority number one. And then, uh, but like you said, and, and Nick Chubb, will he be ready by the time the season rolls around? So I think this spring will be very important to get, you know, Sonny Michelle some more reps and Brendan Douglas and then, uh, you know, some more of the young guys. But uh, they have Elijah Holyfield coming in uh, in the summer or in the fall for practice. But they got to, you know, really, uh, if Chubb doesn't come back, you know, and they got to replace some guys on the offensive line, it's going to be tough for Easton to come in. And if, if Chubb's not fully healthy, you know, we saw with Grayson Lambert once Chubb went out that it was really hard for him to carry the Bulldog team by himself uh, without the running game there. And then Malcolm Mitchell's gone too, their big play receiver. So Georgia has a lot of, like you said, Mark, they're void of playmakers. They really have to try and come in and find, find playmakers, but not only on offense, but on defense too. You mentioned they missed now Jordan Jenkins, Leonard Floyd, uh, Jake Gaines. Uh, those guys, you know, there were some big time playmakers for the Georgia defense. And now, but they have the right guy coming in with Kirby Smart and his background. So, you know, he's, he's got the pedigree, uh, but can he get the job done? You know, it's there's a lot of comparisons to Will Muschamp and him being the defensive style coach under Nick Saban. And, you know, how much does he – and Chad brought it up. How much does he let the offense just take over and uh, not put everything on the defense? Mike, uh, still tons of uh, talent in the secondary. Georgia, possibly one of the best secondaries in the country, coming back and, and with the guys uh, uh, moving out of the NFL – into the role of being the playmaker on a defense in the front seven for Georgia? 
I'm sorry, Mark, can, can you say that last sentence again? I can set you up with uh, Georgia here, whether you want to take it offense or defense. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, I mean, I think Georgia is the perfect illustration of, of the narrative throughout the, the division. They've got a ton of talent both on defense and offense, but, but the theme of the, of the division uh, for the spring is uncertain quarterback and transition the coaching staff. You mentioned that they do have a ton of talent in defense. Uh, their secondary is going to be really good. But, but David mentioned that, that the past few years their defense has underperformed. Uh, I'm not so worried about the defense. I look at a quarterback situation, and really only two teams in the division are coming in with really a settled quarterback situation. you got Lambert, you got Ramsey, and you have Eason. Uh, so what are they going to do there? Uh, we saw uh, You mentioned it. We saw last year when that offense became one-dimensional, uh, the passing attack wasn't able to carry the load for the offense. So I, I think the story for Georgia is very much the story for most of the division. Who's going to be under center? How will they perform? And what will the impact of the coaching transition have on that team? For the first time in 15 years, there's a lot of questions during the spring at Georgia. Now, those fans have gotten used to a steady repetition. You, you know, it kind of was a kind of the tongue-in-cheek joke, or right, another 8, 9, 10, another 9 or 10 win season, no championship. But this year, they really don't know what to expect. A lot of question marks in Athens and that fan base I don't think is used to that after a generation of certainty. And, and what you said about the defense underperforming, I, don't, I think 2012 is the best example of that. It wasn't a bad defense. It was a good defense, but it should have been a great defense right. based on what they moved on to the NFL and almost played for a national championship, came four yards away. I'm going to be interested to see if Kirby Smart as a defensive guru-minded guy will make a difference from the head coaching spot on the defense. We've seen it happen in other places, i.e. Tuscaloosa, Nick Saban, defensive genius coming from you know Michigan State, LSU, and the Miami Dolphins, and then he goes to Alabama, and there you have it, uh, the huge upgrade in defense.